three, two. Ladies and gentlemen, Oliver Anderson presents his story version of Want. Okay, so before the story starts, make sure you get comfortable. It's going to be a, a bumpy ride. And uh, is everybody ready? Okay. It is Nazi-occupied Poland, 1941. You are a 10-year-old Jewish boy in an orphanage, and you still believe that Adolf Hitler is on your side. Your parents left you here when you are younger because their Jewish book business was failing. Three-eighths years, eight months ago to be exact. You have few friends, so you can barely have an emotional connection to this orphanage. That's when you find a whole carrot in your soup. Convinced that your parents sent it to you as a sign, you plot to escape, but then something peculiar happens. Strange men in armbands arrive at the orphanage and burn all of your books. Completely confused, you have no idea why that is. You try to analyze it, but you can't figure it out. Besides, you're only ten. With the gates open from the previous visitors, you slip out during breakfast to find your parents with hope that their business is doing all right. You're on a mountain, so it may take a while, maybe a day or so, to get down. You follow a dusty gravel road for a long time and you see army trucks go by, attempting to shoot at you. Ah! You don't know why this is, you just think it's a merry mix-up. As you travel further down the road, you stumble upon a house with the Jewish star on the front door. You knock. You knock again. But nobody comes. That's when you decide to enter. <laughs> You see two plates of unfinished potato stew, which looks awfully great after eating nasty carrot soup week after week. You decide to finish the food, for it seems a waste to just let it sit there. You hear gunshots in the distance and assume that the owners of this house are just hunting for a rabbit. some nice clothes sitting on the couch and decide you need these if you don't want to be seen looking like an orphan. You leave a note to the people who own this place explaining why you took the stuff. stuff. Hopefully they understand. As you get closer and closer to town, you hear more and more gunshots. <laughs> As you approach the maximum outskirts of town, you see the shop and apartment you grew up in. And you run to it. <coughs> Sorry, got a little something in my throat. You automatically throw the doors open. And you find in your parents' place a mean-looking non-Jewish family. They run at you and almost catch you. But you get away. <sighs> As nightfall approaches, you see a house burning in the distance, and you're curious, so you run towards it. On the lawn of this semi-urban house, you find a dead, burned couple, and the little girl who's breathing through her life. Her name is Zelda, and she doesn't truly know that her parents are dead, but she's sad regardless. You take her to a bale of hay, 
where you will both sleep for the night, and you attempt to tell Zelda a story, because you are a gifted storyteller. She re refuses rudely, so you give up and go to sleep. Upon awakening, you find that Zelda is very hungry. So you both share some bread that you took from the orphanage. You then take Zelda, who still believes that her parents are alive, to the city, convincing her that they're there, as well as your parents. Whew, it's getting tired. On your way to town, you slowly become one with a group of people who look unusually sad. They look as if they are Jewish, for they have brown hair and brown slash green eyes. You don't think anything of this. <coughs> More walking. More walking. As you further move with his body, you begin to see soldiers, but these are not normal soldiers, because they're in forming uniform. They yell and shoot people. <laughs> and this makes you upset, as well as Zelda. But because you're older than her, you can hold in tears. But she is flat out crying. In the distance, you see a gated area with an exceptionally large amount of soldiers. They're yelling, especially loud and angry. Ha! Hey! Ha! They are beating men to the ground and putting children away in trucks. No! I want my mommy! As you reach the gate, the soldier holds a gun to Zelda's head. No! And a man pleads for her life. And the last thing you hear before drifting off of a man beating you. A gunshot! When you wake up, you're in a cellar with many other young boys and girls. One who is older than you, and two the same age, as well as many who are basically toddlers. You insist to the man, <clears throat> who took you here, whose name is Barney, <coughs> to let you out and find your parents. But he says it isn't a good idea, for it's not safe. You tell him about how Zelda's parents are dead, but you couldn't tell her. He insists that you break it to her, and when you do, she cries for hours. It is now nighttime, and you have to go with Barney for a House of Dallas dental care, for that his, his occupation. He brings you along so that you can tell stories to the soldiers in pain. He also tells you to keep quiet about your Jewish background. At the first appointment, you tell a story of an African jungle to a soldier while having a tooth removed. He likes it so much that he wants you to write it down for him. It is now a night later, and you convince Barney to let you out and search for fresh water and supplies. He says yes, so you walk down the street, and you get nervous with the thought of being caught by a soldier. You enter a vacant apartment building, and while rummaging through the stuff, you're seen by a soldier, and you run back as fast as you can to the others, but it's too late! Soldiers have already discovered your people. It is now first light, and you are told directly that you will be going to a death camp. But you now have a realization about your parents. They're going to be killed at this death camp. As you near the train station, 
they ship you away. You notice a locket on Zelda's neck. You see a Nazi and her mother! This is how you'll save her. Her father was a Nazi, so she'll be okay. Upon arriving at the train station, you show the necklace to a soldier. He allows Zelda and Barney to be free. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Barney argues for all of you to stay. You lose the deal. Uh, yeah. You all have to go. Upon boarding the train, everyone begins crying, for their lives are at an end. But there is hope. <laughs> Upon traveling through the Polish countryside, you and your people knock your way through the rotten boxcar. Hey, we're through! And strangers begin to jump. Cannonball! Many being shot by soldiers on the top of the train. Barney convinces you, Zelda, and the girl older than you to jump. You can do it, Felix, you tell yourself, for that is your name. You jump! You land! The older girl is dead! You and Zelda run! But there is hope! Yeah! So that was Oliver Anderson's rendition of the story once. Thank you all! This story was sponsored by OxyClean. Uh. This was a story by Morris Gleitzman.